What's up, beautiful people? This is John Montagna, and you're listening to Radio 418. Thank you so much for checking in on the podcast again. This is my show where I talk to my fellow musicians about the life in music. And this is another archive episode. I'm actually, you know what? I'll be perfectly honest with you. I'm very surprised that I'm even getting an episode up at all this week. It's been a very crazy week. I'm preparing for the big Ringo Starr birthday tribute show that we're doing this coming Sunday, July 9th at 7.30 p.m. at the Cutting Room. Sounds like you've been saying that phrase over and over again, John, for the last couple of weeks. I have. Sunday, July 9th, 7.30 p.m., Cutting Room. Uh, Just the emails and the phone calls and the flyer being designed and uh, setting up rehearsals and practicing. I'm playing guitar on this one. I'm not playing bass. I'm playing some guitar and I'm singing. And some of these songs, as much as I've known them my entire life, I've never sung. So there's some preparation on this one that I was not really uh, prepared for. Does that make any sense? There was preparation on this that I wasn't prepared for? Had a rehearsal with the full band this afternoon. And, oh, my God, sounded so good. Bennett Pastor on keys, Benny Landa on lead guitar, Anthony Babino on guitar, Stephen Babino on bass guitar, Ethan Eubanks on the drums. Everybody just doing their homework and bringing their A game and and just nailing it. Um, I mean, like, I almost had tears in my eyes a couple of times. I was like, oh, my God, this is so good. It's going to be a tremendous show. Anyway, so we're doing an archive episode, as you know, as you probably know, if you've been following the show for any length of time. I moved the podcast over to a new host. We are now powered by Podbean, which I love, giving us unlimited storage and a dedicated website, Radio418.com. The old host was all right. But uh, Podbean was better. And so part of that process involved deleting the old feed, which made all the old episodes go away. So rather than sort of migrate the feed from one host to another, which is a sentence I never thought I'd use, um, I am just taking all of the classic interviews and reposting them, repurposing them in a new format with new intros and outros. And I thought this one would be perfect for today. Today, as I record this, is Friday, July 7th. It's Ringo Starr's 77th birthday. Oh, my God. God bless, man. Peace and love. 77. Peace and love, man. I love that guy. I got to tell you, as much as I'm a McCartney guy and all that, Ringo is just, you know, I've been going down this sort of Ringo rabbit hole the last couple of weeks preparing for this show and i'm finding that as time goes on i admire that guy more and more with each passing year just for being exactly who he is what you see is what you get with him and he is sticking to his story peace and love and you 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 see that guy get behind a drum kit he lays into a backbeat who was it that said uh Who's the 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 drummer with Elvis? DJ Fontana apparently said, "Man, when Ringo gets on a backbeat, you can't get him off it with a crane." And I love that guy, man. So last October, I think it was, I interviewed my friend Roseanne Beluso. Uh, Roseanne is a dear friend, fellow Beatard, fellow McCartney fanatic. She is the Maca Mama on Instagram, and she is one of the founding members, I believe, of Fans on the Run. This is a group that, to call them a McCartney fan club, would not even do it justice. This is a fellowship that extends all around the world. There's about 11,000 people in this group, and uh, they travel long distances to see uh, Sir Paul perform. 
and uh, it's a beautiful group of people, and I really admire uh, the way that they uh, do things there. So Roseanne, in addition to being a fan on the run, works sort of indirectly for Ringo. Uh, Roseanne works with Neil Glazer, who runs a company called Celebrity Art, and uh, which is just that. It's artworks done by celebrities who are known for other disciplines. Tony Bennett paintings and uh, McCartney's paintings. And um, I think they do, uh, I think they've got Ron Wood's stuff and Dylan. And so he is the exclusive dealer of Ringo's artwork. Uh, he does some great pop art uh, that they sell at the shows, and all of that money goes to charity. It goes to Ringo's uh, Lotus Foundation. And so Ringo, Ringo, Roseanne and Neil travel around with the Ringo tour, selling the artwork. So Roseanne gets to hear the Ringo show every night. And uh, I think it was last summer or the summer before she finally, after weeks of being on the road with the man, finally uh, got his attention and uh, had the opportunity to interact with him. And she shared this story on Radio 418 a couple of months ago. And uh, since I'm reposting all of the old episodes anyway, I thought that today would be a great time to share Roseanne's Ringo story once again. So let's go straight to that. This is my friend Roseanne Beluso talking about Ringo. Radio 418. We are the exclusive distributor for Paul McCartney art and for the state of John Lennon, beside Ringo, and Al Hirschfeld, and Ron Wood, okay, and Bob that, Dylan. That's the next question I was going to ask you. Like, what do you do, <laughs> Roseanne? What, what, job, what is it? It's, what, what job do you do that gives you all this free time to travel around and, and subsidizes this very expensive habit of yours? <laughs> right. Well, what I do is... And puts I, you directly I in the path of all these people. I robbed Ringo to pay Paul. Uh, so I, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you've been waiting a long time to use that one <laughs> i could tell <laughs> your timing was way too good on that that's brilliant okay oh, so you have a, an, an art company what 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 is it describe so your business i work for a, a gentleman whose name is neil glazer and he owns a company called celebrity art okay and celebrity art is what exactly what it says. We own okay. we have exclusive rights to many celebrity artists, including Ron Wood, uh, Bob Dylan, who's an unbelievable oil um sorry, acrylic painter, Paul McCartney, Ringo Starr, the estate of John Lennon, um, we have some George Harrison, then we have photography, Bob Groon photography, we have Linda McCartney photography. So we do shows that we do art shows that you know, aren't always Ringo. We just happen to be the exclusive distributor, publisher, and distributor for Ringo's Star. Okay. And Ringo's proceeds of his art go 100% to his charity, the Lotus Foundation. Right, right, And right. it's a blanket charity that him and Barbara then decide where those funds will be directed to animal charities, to addiction charities, women's charities. So Ringo right. doesn't get a dime from, from this art. That's and, cool. And, um... It's a very highly rated foundation, low administrative costs. Mm. You know, a, a, much of of the cents on a dollar go to the causes. So Neil and I represent Ringo's art at his shows. We go on tour with him. He's what he wants. He wants his art exhibited. And we go where he goes. And, mm. um, you know, so we it's direct marketing. I mean, That's you have great. people come in, and now Ringo doesn't sign autographs anymore, as some, you know, you may have heard <laughs> that. So yeah. <laughs> the only way to get Ringo's autograph and you, is on a piece of his art, and it's his hand-signed autograph, numbered, limited edition, right. art quality, beautiful, framed, gorgeous pieces of art. They're mm. not fine art. They're pop art. Mm -hmm. um, but they're happy... And are they Rembrandts? No. But do they provide 
people with happiness who tell me where they hung it and they right. see it every day right. and it makes them happy. And people know that their money's going to the foundation. Right. They're getting a signed piece of Ringo art. Yeah. And it's a win win. So I am so blessed because the people that come to Ringo shows, not that people going to Paul aren't happy, they mm-hmm. are. But there's a jubilance about the Ringo fans yeah. that I can't describe. And mm. especially when the doors open at the end of the show yeah. and they come rushing out, yeah. there is not a face that's not beaming, smiling. Yep. I've it's, seen this Ringo. Is what I he think, does. Yeah, I've seen Ringo a bunch of times. And I think having all those other artists there, you're getting a great representation of like a like it's a real cross section of the music of that generation so it's not just yeah. like when you go to see paul i mean it's com- we're comparing apples and oranges here you go to a mccartney show and it's it's like going to see the pope you are paying homage right. to the idea of beatles and it's right. like a much more uh, sort of cathartic very specific thing about him and his thing whereas with Ringo it's more of a it becomes a celebration of that generation and that era of music and to watch all those other artists on stage together coexisting peacefully like I remember watching Jack Bruce and Peter Frampton playing You're 16 who's the one guy that could be the glue to bring all these different artists together and that's you're Ringo. exactly right every night it's like a jam session right it's like a jam session but i'm the opposite you're you're like grooving to these musicians you know doing ringo stuff i love to watch ringo doing oh yeah como va mm, right and like because i have two so i have a, two breaks a night uh-huh. one of them i go in for is rosanna yeah for obvious reasons yeah, yeah, yeah. and the other one is oh yeah como va because I love to watch Ringo and Greg drum in synchronized rhythm to to, to like that that Latin rhythm and mm-hmm. Ringo it's just he does it like I watch them and they're, they're talking to each other yeah. they remind me of like two people in a cubicle next to each other at an office like right. they're doing their work right 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 but they're fucking rock drumming <laughs> to, like, to Santana right and they're like they're talking and laughing and they're like not and they're, they're in complete synchronization and, yeah. and you know and Ringo's left handed and he's right handed and somehow they're and they're hitting different drums at the same time I'm, right. I'm and it never gets old. Nice. Oh, it I got. I got. I got to see that old. show next time they come around. I got to. I got to take Francesca to see that. And and Neil, my boss, yeah. who is him and I are, we're like, we're best buds. We're just best buds. We be, we spend when we're on tour, we're together eighteen hours a day. Sometimes, sure. We have to. We're like people. We're like I say. We're foxhole mates. You know, we've been through <laughs> driving at one o'clock in the morning through like places where we think we're going to be beamed up by aliens because we're like where the fuck are we welcome are to the, the road G- yeah <laughs> yes yeah, isn't even working because we don't have a signal and he's like you're my yep. sulu i'm like we're gonna have to get a paper map I right don't even, do they even have that and we're like tag team cheerleaders when one of us is losing it it's hard work it is oh hard people work. don't realize you know that it's it's so easy to assume that this business consists of the two hours that you're on stage correct people don't realize that there's another 22 hours of the day of like how are we going to get these 25 people and all this equipment from this town to that town by a certain time you know and in our case we don't go on the tour bus because we have the art and we right. have to have it with us. You're so responsible for we, making your own way from, from A to B. Right. Okay. So we are we are packing up after the show and people are hanging and you know, we're doing a lot of art sales after the show. Sure. They've had a lot of drinks. Yeah. They watched Ringo for two hours. They got the buzz the and this is also an audience shit. and they, and this is also an audience without putting too fine a point on it. These are people that have some money to spend. Correct. And they want to take Ringo home with them now because they're in they're in the moment. <laughs> right. They want and so we're spending a lot of, you know, sales time at the end. Right. So by the time we get rid of that last person, we're starting to pack up at eleven thirty, twelve o'clock. If we have a five hour ride, we'll do half of it that night. Mm. We stay in the, some horrifying no tell motel. Right. And then 
you know, get up the next morning, you know, pack all the art's got to be packed well. You can't wow. just throw it in the car. Right. It's all framed, beautiful, you know. It's, it's, so we're this... not in the car until 2 o'clock in the morning. We're not getting the hotel until 4, and we're up at 9 the next morning driving to the next place where we got to do it all over again. So I had know, no idea that you were such a road dog, Roseanne. I had no oh idea. Oh, my God. I'm a road, I am a road warrior. Wow. Because there's merch on tours. You right. Know, boxes of T-shirts and, and no, CDs I'm not or whatever. Merch. But this is like... This is like one of a kind artworks by Ringo fucking star that you, right. <laughs> you have Correct. to, where do you store that okay. stuff overnight? So what we do is we, now we're going the West coast. So right. uh, we're starting in Seattle. So we shipped the lion's share of it okay. to the first hotel okay. that we're going to be at. And that what we do, depending on whether merch is a, <laughs> cause we're, we have this all down to sign. Right. So whether merch is a woman or a man, ah. then we have to decide which one of us is going to sidle up to merch and be like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> nice. So the last time, so Neil is like, so merch is a girl. Uh-huh. I go, oh, I guess you're going to have to put on your powers of persuasion. So then he comes <laughs> over to me and he goes, I think she plays for the other team. Go, Roseanne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That's great. So usually merch, we've never had a bad merch. We always seem to be blessed with a really good merch. So Ringo doesn't all... travel with a merch person. They do. They use local people. No, merch comes along. So okay. merch comes along. They got a rider truck and we say, can you take our art? I Otherwise, see. we're shipping, and right. we can't do that. We have shows the next day. Right, but like, where does it sit overnight? You don't leave it in the hotel parking lot. It stays in the in the merch truck. Yeah, really. It goes with merch. Okay, if we can get merch to take it. It goes with merch. I mean, it's all insured. Okay, and all then right. this time because we're traveling to the West Coast, so we ship like a, one major thing, and then both of us will take an extra suitcase that's loaded with the sawing drum heads like we'll have a whole suitcase of drum heads oh and, my god um yeah because Ringo signs we have like he'll sign 10 drum heads a night we sell out of those immediately yeah so we have the blank ones that we bring and he signs you know so all those our supplies stuff we need to set up so that'll go in suitcases so we'll each have an extra suitcase and then we'll literally have one show and then fly to the next one show fly to the next one show fly to the next so there'll be no driving on this particular leg of the tour okay each show is too far away so we're gonna fly okay so last tour the second night we set up we were like we we set up at this outdoor it was a casino but we were in the parking lot it was the weirdest thing right and um we were fighting you go go get ready no you go get ready no you go get ready no you go Uh, he's like ringo sound checking now he said i can't go backstage and get anything done because he goes backstage every night and gets the drum head signed right he goes i can't do anything you go 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 get ready go in the bathroom so, you know, I take my bag. I go, I promise I'll be back in 15 minutes. I've learned to get ready. You know, I'm one of these girls that needs two hours to get ready. But right. I've learned to make it be 15 minutes. I sure. call it the express glam. And, and I go, okay, I'm running. I'm running. I'm running. To, I'm going to run. I'm going to be back in 15 minutes. I promise you. <laughs> so I'm in the bathroom getting ready really fast. I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm like a military like girl. I'm, I'm right. bathing with baby wipes like right. in, in Afghanistan. <laughs> you know, so come back. I'm, I'm looking great. I come back. I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I'm walking like Gene Wilder and, you know, Richard Pryor. I'm walking back to the booth. <laughs> and Neil comes at me holding his phone. And I go, what? And he goes, here. And he's just walking toward me with his phone out. And I go, what? And I look at it, and it's a picture of Ringo standing in the fucking art booth. <gasps> Uh, <laughs> and, I go, and he goes, he just left. Ah, ah, oh, the one time. Okay. And I go, what? Oh, my God. He just God. left. He, he walked over like five seconds after you walked away. Oh, my God. And I go, and you didn't text me? How could I take my phone out and start texting when Ringo stands Ringo's here, get back. Like, right, right, right. I felt like, like, like a parade float that somebody had just stabbed. I went, <laughs> I just, I just, I went down into the seat. I just sat in the seat like, oh. like limp. 
I was limp in the seat, and Neil's like, no, it's all right, Roseanne. I'm like, no, it's not all right. No, it's no, not all right. <laughs> no. I go, I'm not going to, no, now I'm not going to meet him. I'm not going to meet him this tour. I'm not. No, no, you will. I'm like, no. Right. No, I, no. Wow. So I'm like folded in half in the chair, and Neil's like, all right, I got to go backstage now. Are you going to be all right? I'm like, no. Yeah. You, I gotta go back. You're gonna be all right, Roseanne. The doors are opening in ten minutes. Yeah. They're opening in ten minutes. Roseanne. I gotta go backstage right. like, to sit across the table yeah. from Ringo and watch him Correct. sign these drum heads, and and then say uh-huh. thank you, Ringo, and he'll say, okay, Neil, see ya. I'm gonna right. go have a personal right. interaction with him right, right now right. that you didn't After have. After he's already been here. After he's already been here. Don't worry, Roseanne. Oh, There'll be another chance. I'm like, no. So no, that's not the be. the the vibe in the Ringo ecosystem. You don't just walk up. To the man and introduce yourself. No. Uh uh-uh. uh. Okay. That's a sort of a, um, a protocol that's in place that they just tell you, like, if you see him, great. If not, you don't go knocking on his door asking him for shit. Correct. Okay. And I had an all access pass, but I was very cognizant of being not seen or heard. So the right. only time I would use the backstage to go to the bathroom or grab a water or get food would be if they were sound checking right. or I knew they weren't there yet. Right. So I'm talking to all of them. I don't let any of them see me backstage. So mm-hmm. if they see me, if they come, because they come out to the bar, if there's, cause there's no, it's dry backstage because of Ringo. Sure, sure. So if they come to the bar, which is where we're setting up, you know, I could, the band is different. You could talk to them and whatever, but just out of respect, I know how Neil is. Right. And it, when it comes to a Beatle, it doesn't matter how long you've worked for them or how much good you've done. Your head's on the chopping block at any minute. Once the king mm-hmm. says off with his head, that's it. Okay. Yeah. And so I, I suffered through that and I thought, well, you know, I, I don't go on this tour and work like I do to meet Ringo, hang with Ringo, or think I'm Ringo's friend. If right. I get to meet him, it's icing. So okay. I got over that. That was day two <laughs> of a 23-day tour that we were <laughs> right. doing 19 shows of. If I got the wind knocked out of my sails on that, it was just going to be a bad trip. And, if, so and I, if that ruins your vibe for the tour, you don't belong in this business either. Correct. Not, not for nothing. I had to shake it off. It <laughs> right. took me a couple minutes. Good for you. I shook it off. The doors opened, the people came in, and I always say, I'm pimping Ringo's art like it's my best whore. Yeah. And that's what I did. <laughs> so, you know, I went on, I soldiered on, and every night I would hope that somehow he was going to show up at the booth, but I knew it wasn't going to happen. <laughs> so next to the last night of the tour, okay. we're in, um, I don't even know where, somewhere in Indiana or Ohio, it's a closed sound check. You're not allowed to go in. Uh-huh. But I will stand outside the door and listen because sometimes they play things that you're just like, wow. Like right. they played If I Only Had a Brain one night at Soundcheck. Uh, okay. They're wailing on the guitar. Yeah, and yeah. So you'll have my ear to the door. But he told me, don't be seen in there. It's a closed sound check, blah, blah, blah. So the next to the last tour was a, an outdoor venue. So it's really impossible to have a closed sound check in, a, in an outdoor venue. Right. So I went quietly sat in the, on the you know on the steps in the very very back and it was like a million degrees and it's the midwest and it's so humid and right. we had set up and i said i need five minutes to collect myself i'm just so hot i'm i'm dead i want to sit down i want to have water and i didn't tell him where i was going but i so I sat in the back and you know they started playing and then boys is like my beatlemania song uh, okay okay so when i hear boys like I've been told, That's like, it. the first line, I'm like, I got Beatlemania, and right. I just jump up. It doesn't matter if I'm on my last breath. That's Ringo's so track on introducing up. the Beatles, man. Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so he launches into boys, and I'm like, I'm up. I'm forgetting how dog-tired I am, how hot I am, how sweaty <laughs> I am. I'm feeling it. It's like those those people in the Baptist church, you know, they're like, right. they're feeling it. So. I get up and now I'm starting to, you know, I'm starting to move a little bit. And the next thing you know, I'm just full on go go dancing. I am doing the frug. I'm doing the swim. I'm doing the Pope Fiction. And Ringo sees me and starts laughing. Oh my God. And now he's talking to Greg and they're both laughing and they're all looking at me. And that's just put that I'm, I'm like putting it on even thicker. I'm like, Color blue. I'm a girl in the cage. Okay. So he finishes playing and he goes, Nice dancing, baby. And, 
And I said, peace and love, baby. And he said, peace and love to you. Oh, nice. So I'm like, come walking back all like, mm-hmm, you know, to the off booth. And Neil goes, was that you? <laughs> was, that, was that me what? Did Ringo just say, nice dancing, baby, to you? I'm like, <laughs> yes. And he, he said, <laughs> Did I tell you it was a closed sound chef? <laughs> yes, Neil, but it was outside. But it was so outside. I was like, in it. I go, I didn't think he could see me all the way back there. So, and he's like, fine, whatever. I go, oh my so God. Like, no, no. Yeah, so he goes, okay. He goes, I just couldn't get out. I was watching you from the back, and I'm like, oh my God, she's like on Hull Blue. She's oh, that's so, so funny. That was his word. She, she should be in a cage. He goes, so. He goes backstage and he gets the drum head signed and yeah. the girl dancing comes up. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And he goes, she works for me. She works for you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. So he's like, those are some great dance moves. So he comes back and he goes, well, you got a compliment tonight. Ringo said you had really good dance moves. Oh, so I'm like, man. oh, that's nice. Right. So I'm still thinking like, but... Yeah, whatever. Now, like, you let's know, just back. Not, let's just back up for a second. You, 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 is Ringo doing boys? Okay, imagine Washington Coliseum, nineteen sixty-four. Ringo's Correct. doing boys, and there's no right. one in the place but you. <laughs> imagine you're in the Washington Coliseum. Ringo's singing boys, and it's just right. you in an empty okay. concert hall. And he says, "Nice dancing, babe." Oh, my God. You know what? You're making this bigger than I really thought it was. Yeah. I'm actually getting chills now. Think about it. <laughs> Think about the average, like, like all that newsreel footage of the screaming girls from Queens. Like, we've been out here since 4 a.m. to try and meet them. Okay. Imagine what one of those girls would give to have a private, just no one in the audience but them, Ringo singing boys, and, they, and they're dancing, and Ringo says, nice dance moves, lady. Or whatever. You know what I mean? Baby. 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 So, sorry, yeah. I, so, I, 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 I got the quote wrong. I apologize. Baby. Yeah. And so I, and I, and I come back and I'm like, and here I am like, yeah, well, I mean, oh, whatever. It's still not me. Okay. So I'm like, it for granted. Yeah, well, it's good. It's all right. But, mm. So then he comes back and goes, Ringo said you had some nice dance moves. Mm. So I'm like, oh, that's good. Okay. So. Now it's the the last night. We we, we go to Cincinnati and we're doing the last night. Okay. And he goes, okay, I'm going backstage. Get the drum head signed. And he's always back there, like for like an hour, like you know, hanging out and right. being all one with the band. And so <laughs> he's there like ten while you, minutes. While, while you're minding the store. While I'm minding the store, <laughs> I'm out sweating. You know, so I'm. So, you know, making friends with the ushers because later on I'm going to have to sneak down the aisle to get to the front and watch Luke at their, you know, do Rosanna. <laughs> right. So he uh, he calls me like 10 minutes after he's backstage. Yeah. I said, yeah, what's going on? He goes, come to stage right immediately. Oh. And my heart goes. My oh. heart stops. Oh. And I go, what? He goes, come to stage right immediately. Do not stop. Do not pass go. Do not put your lipstick on. Come to stage right immediately. Wow. And I go, ah, oh, okay. Right. And he goes, run. Oh, wow. So I'm running, and there he is waving me. He's waving me. And I come up the ramp at the side, and he goes, follow me. And I go, Neil. And he goes, follow me. And <laughs> I'm following him, and we go in the side door, and there's a door, and it says Ringo Star on it. And he, it's already half open, and Neil goes in, and he goes, here she is. And I'm in the hall. I'm just <laughs> still in the hall. And I'm just standing there. And then he comes, sticks his head out, and he goes, Roseanne. And I'm like, God. like, and the feet are just not moving. And I, right. I go in the room, and Ringo is sitting on a couch, and yeah. he gets up. He stands up, he comes over to me, and he goes, So, you're the one with the dance move. <laughs> and at that second, I had like six second to pull my shit together right and be be completely calm cool and collected and act like this wasn't a giant ass big deal right because i've met him but not in his dressing room right not because he asked 
to see me. Where did you meet him before? Um, we When we do meet and greets, like uh-huh. with public, people will pay a certain amount of money. They get like a piece of art. Right. There's a minimum purchase. And then he will do a meet and greet. They meet him. They take a picture with him. And I'm there in my professional capacity. Okay. One time at a meet and greet, I got to go up to him. I gave him some bricks that I had taken off Madron Street before uh, it was being demolished. Okay. Now it's been saved from demolition, but I had picked up some bricks. I put them in a little jar and I gave them to him and I said, you should never forget where you came from. And he touched my face and told me that that was the sweetest thing anyone's ever said to him. Oh, wow. So we had our little moment, but it was But not, it was it was a sort of uh, a controlled, sort of sanctioned meeting with the public kind of vibe. Correct. You were not summoned. Correct. I was summoned. Oh, it's wow. Summoned. Okay. Yeah. So... And he goes, I haven't seen dance moves like that in 40 years. <laughs> and I'm like, really? And I'm like, so he goes, and I dig your crazy pants. Because every day I wear these crazy, like, bell-bottom pants that are sure. all paisley and printed. And he goes, I dig your crazy pants. And he goes, you were wearing a different pair yesterday. And I go, yeah, but how did you see me? Yeah. I mean, I was at the back of the auditorium. And he yeah. says, I see everything. <laughs> and then he takes his sunglasses off yeah. and l- puts his face right up to me. And he goes, except now I'm blonde as a bat. Yeah. And his eyes were blue marbles half an inch away from my face. Wow. And right at that, you know how people say, like, your life flashes before your eyes when you're going to die? Well, you know what was flashing before my eyes? Yeah. Images from help. I don't know why. Right. But I'm seeing him in help. I'm seeing him covered in red paint. He's well, that was on. the it's last like, time you really saw Ringo's eyes up close. Correct. In a, in and a, in color. After a certain point, you never saw Ringo without dark glasses on. Correct. So you he know? took his glasses off and looks at me and goes, but I'm blind as a bat without these. And then he goes, where'd you go? And then he goes, ah, ha, 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 ha. you know what his Ringo laugh? <laughs> Cracking so- joke and laughing at it himself. Yes, yes, uh-huh. <laughs> oh, cool. Yeah, uh-huh. I go, you know, Ringo. And like Neil, I could see Neil is like doing like what Donald Trump was doing with Hillary. He's like, he's, he's like shadowing. behind Ringo. <laughs> he's trying to keep my eyes because Roseanne <laughs> could just go rogue at any moment. So... He's like, he's he, Ringo, he, he doesn't and, want anything that's going to cause Ringo to use a different celebrity art dealer next tour. Correct. <laughs> right. So he's trying to keep, he's trying to like meet my gaze, but I'm not having any of it. Right. He's trying to like keep me, keep me <laughs> sober. You know, so I go, you know, Ringo, I was very uh, honored and I felt very like happy that you called me baby yeah. because I noticed that when people yell out in the audience, like at night, you know, your fans, you'll be like, thank you, madam, or you're very excited, madam. And I go, and if you called me madam, I would have died. Because <laughs> if a 76-year-old man called me madam, right. I would have killed myself. Sure. And he goes, well, you're not a madam, <laughs> you're a baby. All right. So, and I go, do I have your, because Neil would be like, don't go in the aisle, don't go in the show, don't go. Right. I go, Ringo, do I have your permission to dance? Um, at the show tonight, and he goes, I want you to dance anywhere I can see you, baby. And I'm like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. And I'm just, like, holding it together, you know, and then I go, okay. And he he goes, well, I'm going to be off to dinner now, you know, which was great. You know, he drew it to a close very nicely. and, And I said, okay. And I'm like, hugs and kisses to Barbara. And he goes, oh, Barbara's in Greece. And I go, really? That's lovely. I go, you know, they have the most beautiful jewelry in Greece, so she's probably spending all your money there. I goes, well, good tip. I'm going to have to put a stop on the credit card. <laughs> and he gave me a ginormous hug and kiss when I came in, when I left. And we walked out, and I'm like, Neil is just standing there looking at me. And he's like, so? And I go, so what? And he goes, so thank you, Neil. And I'm like, uh, no, thank you again <laughs> for dancing and getting his attention. <laughs> right. Oh, Nice. Very nice. Yeah. And that was the last night of that tour. And I was like on cloud nine. Way to go. Way to go, Roseanne. Nicely Uh, done. Amazing. Nicely done. And, you know, he's so, people say he's cranky and he's, you know, brash. And he, that's not the Ringo I've ever seen. That's not the the guy you encountered. Okay, good. No. Of course. Just lovely, wonderful made my day, made right. my summer. Yeah. Sure. It's and I just kept going like it you know, as much as I've met Paul on stage three times, backstage once. Yeah. Ringo is more iconically Beatle. Right. When you're talking to Ringo, he's almost 
a caricature of himself. Yeah, yeah. You can't keep help from just keep seeing beetle images in your mind. That's right. Where I can, at this point, I can, I've talked to Paul and, and he's becoming more of a man to me. Yeah. Where Ringo, surprisingly enough, is still very much beetle Ringo. The spirit of the Beatles, whatever that is. I think Ringo carries that. Paul is aware of the fact that he's got that mantle to carry, but then Paul went off and did Wings and kind of reinvented himself as a solo artist more... Uh, what's than Ringo. I yeah. think you've, that's yeah. very astute observation. Yeah. And Ringo is a hippie. Ringo ah. is a hippie and still has a hippie vibe. Okay. And Paul can be very Wall Street. Uh-huh. Interesting. Ringo has people that do that for him. Paul is his own, Mm -hmm. you know, business. Ringo is, you know, shops at Whole Foods by himself and, you know, gets his granola. He's very hippie. He's still very hippie. Not that he's not good with business, but he has he's hired people to take care of that he's, for him. He's smart well, enough to know to get the best people to handle it correct, and to not let correct. himself get we ripped have, off. When I went to Vegas for the love anniversary, yeah. the two of them just, we happened to have like, you know, I, I got the Beatle gods watching out for me. I got yeah. seats randomly, and my seats are the aisle that they came down to talk and then came back. And both of them walked by and just hand slapped me. Uh, I'm like, oh my God, because wow. two Beatles in one night. This is like to right. see them together. Right. Wow. Does the air in the room change when the two of them are together? Yes. Okay. <laughs> and I watched them. I watched them the whole show. I didn't yeah. even see the show. I watched them. They were talking and laughing and leaning into one another. Wow. And, you know, I guess. And you're just like, you know, they were both like leaning in and like snickering and you saw them laughing and you saw them talking and then they were pointing at what was going on and then like, oh my what God. What a trip that must be for the two of them. Well, when we left Ringo's dressing room and we were walking back, I go, so Neil, how was I? Yeah. He goes, no, you were cool. You were cool, Roseanne. You yeah. were cool, except you were talking really, really fast. <laughs> and for you, that's fast. Wow. And I go, was I? I go, I didn't feel like I was. He goes, no, you were talking really fast. And also, by the way, I don't know if you know, but you did Ringo to Ringo. You went, calm down, madam. You did that to Ringo. You imitated (laughs) Ringo to Ringo. (laughs) You know what, though? You have to think that he has dealt with much worse than you over the years. Right. I personally think he was delighted by me, if you <laughs> want to know. <laughs> well, you're lovely. <laughs> How did you get um, into the celebrity art racket? How did that start for you? My, my youngest flew the coop, and I have been a stay-at-home mom. I went to FIT. I have a background, you know, okay. in, in communications okay. and, uh, you know, artistic uh, background. And so when my youngest flew the coop and went to college, I was— Sort of like, I want to do something, but it has to be something I love. I'm not going to go work at a drudge. That's just not going to, after I've done motherhood for 25 years, I need something that's going to fill all of what I've given, you know? Right. And it just, an opportunity arose for me to work for this Beatle artist who I was a fan of, Eric Cash. His name is Eric Cash, and he's an incredibly talented artist. And um, he paints uh, portraits of the Beatles, oils on canvas. And okay. he did one called The Introduction. That's his most famous work. And it's John and Paul meeting at St. Peter's At the, um, the Wilton Church. Village Faith. Right. And they're being introduced by Ivan Vaughn. And so no one thought that was important enough to take a picture of, of course. Right. So he interviewed all the quarrymen and everyone there, including Ivan. And he created a painting that, according to the quarrymen, is like what's in their mind's eye as John wow. meeting Paul. He got to talk to Ivan so, Vaughn? Yeah. Oh, so he's been on this thing for a minute because Ivan passed in like 1993. Correct. I think, right? and you okay. can look it up on, you can Google it, The Introduction by Eric Cash. Okay. So I became a fan of Eric's through that painting because I thought that painting was like the Big Bang. That's what I called it. I'm like, okay. this is the Big Bang of mm-hmm. Beatles history. Yeah. Because if this didn't happen... We're not even talking to each other right now. Right. The origin so, story, as they say in comic book And, you know, terms. Ivan Vaughn is the patron saint of the Beatles. People need to understand that. That's right. I mean, he's the one who said, I need to get these two guys together. Right. So thank you, Ivy. That's so right. anyway, I bought the piece, the introduction. Mm-hmm. And then when Eric, who's based in Dallas, came to New York for a show in, in uh, Soho, I went there to see him and see his work in, in 
person, and I met his manager. Okay. And we just hit it off. His manager's from Brooklyn, and we started talking Brooklyn and Beatles. And, you know, when you get together with Beatle people, it's, it's instant connection. That's right. Then you throw in Brooklyn. You throw in Italian. And the next thing you know, okay. you're, you're, you're Paisan. You're familiar. That's exactly you're, right. Yeah. We, we just got on, and we started to be friends. And then we were sending emails, and we were talking, and we were communicating, and we were meeting at different things. And, and then he said, you know, Roseanne, you have an incredible passion for Eric's art, for the Beatles, you are very, you know, well spoken, and we really could use somebody to help us, and you know, with with Eric, and and so I, you know, I'm 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 a very quick learner, so I took my communication skills that I learned in FIT to the right. 21st century. One of my my oldest son, who's a graphic designer. He showed me how to do email blasts. I got on Mailchimp. I started to do public relations. I did flyers. I, so I was working for Eric. We were doing art shows, Beatles fests. He was t- taken off. He's doing doing good. I'm, All right. I'm with these two guys. I'm I'm traveling. You know, okay. You know, we're going to fest. We're going to art shows. We're doing Abbey Road on the River. And then uh, at a Beatles fest, I met Neil, who was selling Ringo art. Yeah. You know, it's all networking in this business. That's right. And as, as and for you as well, as That's I'm right. sure. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so I met Neil, and then Eric was kind of starting to slow down a little bit. He wasn't keeping me as busy as I wanted to be. Right. Because it's it was good, but it wasn't enough. And right. um, you know, Neil offered me. He said, "I don't want to step on any toes, and I don't want to steal you away from them." But I, you know, I could use help and. And would you like to help me with the Ringo? And, and he goes, but on a trial basis, because Neil's very that way. Like, don't think you're going to job forever. Yeah. And we just, you know, let's see how it works. Let's do one tour and see how it works. Right. And we we got along great. He's Jewish from Brooklyn, uh-huh. which is the same. Yeah, you know. It's basically you know, the he's same an thing. Italian. That's right. Forget it. That's right. You know, he's a very perfectionistic person. So am I. You know, I'm high energy. He's low energy. I always say he's like Richard Lewis. He does a lot of like, blah, blah, blah. you know, I don't know. I don't think I can go on. So we're, we're a great team. Yeah. I'm thrilled to be uh, help him and be a part of it. Nice. And, you know, when we're home and we're not on tour, then I, I do a lot of eBay sales for him and I fulfill those orders. And okay. it's just been, it's been the most wonderful experience. And I, I kind of have to believe that, it's Beatles magic. Like, yeah. don't you see the doors that open just because you have aligned yourself with the Beatles? I mean, isn't yeah. it a magical? Doesn't don't the Beatles make the world a smaller place? Definitely. Whenever I get into these conversations with people about Beatles versus Stones or Beatles versus this band, and I'm like, don't you understand? That this isn't. Yeah, we could argue over which band had a hipper choice of cover songs or who was the better guitar player. But those guys, you know, influenced the way an entire generation thought and behaved. There's almost a religious, I use that word term loosely, yeah. or a religious or, or a fellowship, let's put it that way, because that right. can be secular or religious. Mm-hmm. There's a fellowship amongst Beatles fans yeah. that... Reminds me of like if you've traveled abroad and you you say, oh it's Sunday I'm gonna go into a church for service I, I mean I I've, I've gone into a um, Catholic church in Singapore uh-huh. because I was there on a Sunday wow. and um and I'm I belong you know right they're singing the hymns they're doing the prayers sure I belong they're, and everyone in there is Malaysian but right. I belong here because I'm one of you sure you get that yep. when you meet any Beatle fan mm-hmm. that that fellowship. It's it's instant when you start to say names and things that, that and you see the light behind their eye when mm-hmm. you say something really obscure mm-hmm. and you're like you're part of me. Yep. They yep. know your soul instantly. The, the shared language, or when you, you drop a quote from uh, from a hard day's night or whatever, or from mm-hmm. one of the interviews, you know, and you, you test people. You know, to see what level you they're do, on. You're right. You're exactly right. When you drop a quote and somebody laughs, you right. like you go like hug them. I just did that the other day in um in Indio. I don't know. We were there and I, somebody said something and I'm like that wasn't a bit like Cagney. And the, right. one yeah. somebody went, Aha! and I went, who just laughed? Come over here. There you go. Right. Right. It's not right. a bit like Cagney. There you go. <laughs> All right. Uh, fans on the run. How did that start? Okay. So fans on the run. 
So we, the night I got signed by Paul in 2010 yeah. in Philadelphia, I met um, three people, two from Panama and one from Argentina. Okay. By the way, the, the people come from everywhere to see Paul, and they go all over, and they follow him all over the world. Yeah. And after I got off the stage, the one of them, I was, you know, forget it, I was having an out-of-body experience, but one of them came <laughs> up to my husband and said, here's my business card. I was in the second row center and i got a lot of pictures of your wife he goes ah. so here's my business card contact me and i'll send you the pictures that i took so then i i contacted him and then the two women he was with who they just met that night uh-huh. they I turn out to be big big paul fans as well right so one of them said that she met so many people that night that mm. she wanted to remain friends with because she was from panama and she was going back she emailed me and she said, can you email anybody you know or contact them on Facebook and tell them I'm going to start a Facebook page group called Fans on the Run. I think that's a good name because I know so many people that are literally chasing Paul around the world. Uh-huh. And I, this would be a good place for us to like talk when we're not on tour. Uh-huh. And I said, oh, sure. OK. So I, I, you know, we started to converse and I told her who I, I the people I knew. I mean, I brought my own squad with me i already yeah. had a lot of people in place and now we have international connections so she starts this page and she goes oh thank you for all of your the people you told to like i'm up to like 60 people on the page and this is like three weeks later oh wow and i'm like that's great that's so great and nice. she's like yeah you were one of the first 10 people you're like a charter member blah 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 now at this point you're working for neil glazer already no oh, no no oh mm-hmm. okay no no i think i got to the point i am because when I got signed by Paul in Philly, yeah. I called up and made an appointment for a tattoo. No, yeah. I'm an Italian Catholic girl. I yeah. don't get tattoos. Right. I had to call my mother. I'm 50 and say, Mom, <laughs> I know you're not going to be happy about this, but I got signed by Paul McCartney last night on stage. And my mother said, I can't believe this is still going on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so you had a tattoo and artist. I'm getting it tat yeah. I'm getting it tattooed today. And she said, again, thank yeah. God two are dead, because this can only happen one more time. Uh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> okay. So P S yeah. what happened with that was I went to the tat I called, I said, I got it signed by Paul McCartney. The tattoo parlor Somebody there called the local paper. When I got there, the local paper was there. It's a Uh, local. It's called the Daily Local. It's a local paper. But by the next day, that article and the pictures got picked up by Associated Press, Uh and it went worldwide. Got it. Okay. So you're you're already sort of like a prominent fan. (laughs) Yes. I'm getting contacted by radio stations nationwide. I'm doing radio interviews television interviews, Inside Edition, oh my CBS God. News at my house with the satellite truck in the front, moving my furniture to bring cameras in. This went on for like, it was more than 15 minutes. It was about two weeks. Oh, my God. So through that, I got to be friends with DJs across America, very famous people. People know me now. I'm getting contacted by people who are like, Sean Weiss and people right. who want to talk to me. So right. my connections just exploded. Well, this is a net positive, time. too. Let's not forget that, like, Paul is like Mr. Media Guy. He's like Mr. And, and PR, and point, this is only good for everyone. Absolutely, because I found out later yeah. that Paul has a clipping service and that every time his name appears in print, it is clipped and put on his desk. And that meant that those next couple of days, he had Roseanne Beluso's picture and face and right. name in his face for like a week. Grown woman, so, grown adult woman who seems to not be a complete lunatic gets his signature tattooed on him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> yeah. So, okay. so I have an explosion of media connections, people, and I'm telling all of them, Go on this Fans on the Run page. That's where you'll follow me. Ah. That's where I'm going to post everything. That's where you're going to get the pull. And what it became was a movement. Mm. We we have 11,000 followers. Wow. And 
They're like eye reporters all over the world. Got it. So people are putting on pictures. I saw Paul here in Antigua. He has Paul eating in a restaurant. (laughs) Paul is going to be here. Rumors are leaked on there. You know, there's a tour coming up. I heard through this one. I heard through the grapevine. He's going to appear here. The band and crew come on fans on the run page to find out where they're going. Uh, <laughs> this brings Stuart up... Bell follows us, who's Paul's publicist. Right, right, right. So the fans on the run are 11,000 worldwide, 39 countries. Paul knows us. Paul, they put us together now because we do signs. We hold them up. He sings fans on the run. Nice. And it started with... 50 people six years ago. That's incredible. Now, there obviously are Paul McCartney, quote unquote, fan clubs and chat rooms and Facebook groups all over the place that have been around since the beginning of the Internet, I'm sure. What mm-hmm. what sets you guys apart from uh, from uh, from everyone else? Because there's there's a different quality to you guys that that uh, that other chat rooms and other sort of fan clubs don't have. I mean, what, what what how do you account for how quickly this took off, and what are you guys doing differently? I, well, okay, so I think that because the core initial core group of people are the people who have been to the 150 shows. Okay, we they know us. There's the trust now a personal trust between us, the band. We know the band personally. We know the crew personally. We know the security personally. They know who's running the page, who's moderating the page. We have had issues with fans gone rogue and awry that we've had to bring to the attention of security. Right. So we're their eyes and ears in the world. They can't be everywhere. So your motivations are pure. Oh, you're not, you're not motivated it. by anything unwholesome, and you respect his space, and you keep your distance, and you maintain mm-hmm. that there's a code of ethics. There uh, is a code of there, ethics. That, uh, That's that correct. You, okay. We will sell tickets. Like people want to dump tickets on the page, and everybody knows the rules is that you can dump tickets. They got to be face, face value, value or less. There you go. Okay. Or less. All right. There's no money, no money to be made by us, nobody to be made by anybody else. We okay. do ticket swaps. We like I can make it. That it's like a forum. Like oh, I bought tickets for Sacramento, but I can't make it. And somebody will say, well, I'm, I'm, you know, I'll switch with you. I'm, I was going to go to Fresno, but I can. And we'll do face value tickets. And we right. always that's the policy. Face value or less. We set it up. We put people together. We people we put people together who need at a show, and they, you know they can trust that if the fans on the run say, I know. How and I know him. Right. You guys can meet. Go to exit seven. He'll be there with the money. You'll be there with the tickets. Right. I, I mean, it's it's just beautiful. Okay. It's a beautiful thing. That is really really cool. And you and you're all uh, without you know just you're you're all of a certain age as well, right? Um, you're, you're, I mean, it spans the gamut. We have twenties. Okay. We have twenties. Huh. Okay. They start in the twenties. They go up to the seventies. Okay. So it spans the gamut. We we have more and more. I'm noticing the new followers are millennials or or less, like twenty huh. twenty something, big twenty okay. something. Wow. And to see these young girls like, again, the stuff they post, and you know they, they're insane over him. They sure. they, would, they give their right arm to be with Paul. <laughs> <laughs> it totally did. Yeah, I, I I have yet to meet him. I got within arm's distance of Ringo once. That's a whole other story. I'll tell you another time off the show. But I know enough people that have met him many met Paul many 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 times that if they all kind of say the same thing that it's like a different. It's a whole other scene when you're in the room with that guy. You speak when you're spoken to. Mm-hmm. And... But they they disarm you, not in a way that you're aggressive, but they right. disarm your nervousness. They know just how to put you at ease. I, you know, I was on stage three times with Paul. I met him backstage. There's on stage Paul and backstage Paul. Uh huh. There's not on stage Ringo and backstage Ringo. Ringo's right. Ringo. Okay. <laughs> Paul is much much more reticent. Uh, his body language is is reserved. Interesting. On stage, he's you walk on, he's hugging you, he's welcoming you. He's backstage. Paul is yes. You step up to him, and but you know, I'm like, so Paul, I'm yeah. going to show you something. Yeah. And I I brought him the introduction. That's what I gave him backstage. I brought him that painting. Ah. Goes, so Paul, I got to, I got to show you something. He goes, show me. Yeah. 
he recognized me. He pointed at me and went, I yeah. know you. Yeah. And I, and I thought, oh, my God, he just said I know you. <laughs> and, and I'm like, well, I go, yeah. And I turn, I show him the shoulder, and he goes, oh, that's it. And yeah. then I start to talk again. I go, so I want to show you something. He goes, wait a minute. There was another time, wasn't there? And I'm like, oh, my God. Uh. I'm like, yeah, I danced with you in Fenway. And he goes, oh, yeah. And I'm right, like, <laughs> right. So you show, you show, you so show him I the showed, painting. I, I showed him the painting, and I go, I want to show you this. I want to give you this. And he says, oh, okay. And we open it up, and it was rolled up, and we open it up. He takes the rubber band, and he puts it on his wrist. Yeah. Like the rubber band that was on it. And I'm like, oh, my yeah. God. <laughs> like, just a simple thing. It was like, that, right. oh, my God, he's acting like a real person. Right. So he's holding one side, I'm holding the other, and I go, so, Paul. Um, you know who these two handsome guys are here, right? Yeah. Uh, which was him and John. I go, do you know this? And he goes, okay, I'll do with Ivy. Yeah. And he goes, and, and Colin and Pete yeah. and Len. And I go, do you remember this? And he goes, yes. <laughs> and I said, um, you know, I started explaining to him that there's no pictures of this, of course, because nobody thought it was important enough to take pictures of. Right. And I said, and I, I, the artist that made this, I said, we, we sell this. We very popular piece. I go, I call it the Big Bang of yeah. Beatles history. Yeah. And he went, Big Bang? I like that. Yeah. And he's <laughs> so engaged in it. He goes, so where's Eric? I don't see Eric Griffiths. I go, Eric was in the men's room. I go, here's his banjo leaning on the yeah. chair. But he was in the men's room. And he stops. He looks at me and he goes, if you say so. <laughs> and, I, and I go, <laughs> so I go, well, Eric said that he was in the men's room or that was his recollection yeah but the whole time i spoke to him about it i'm like and this hangs in st peter's this picture now hangs there right. there was a ceremony when they unveiled it yada 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 and i'm talking to him and the whole time i'm talking to him about the painting he's just putting his finger stroking john he's just touching john oh he's my touching john god. oh my god john I, how i kept my shit together i have no idea oh like my i was god Cause, and, I, and I'm trying to keep talking. And I'm like, and then he also found out that this and blah, blah, blah. And he talked to the, the sextant there of the church. Right. And he talked to this guy and the photographer that took the first picture of John on the lorry. And, I, and he's just, he's got his forefinger and he's just, he's just touching. He's going around the face and he's touching his hand on the guitar. And I'm just like, holy crap. Holy crap, Roseanne. I'm getting chills. That's crazy. Holy man. crap. And I said, you know, I know you're in a rush now. You look, you know, you got to get on stage or whatever. I said, this painting has a lot of detail, and I'm hoping that later you'll have a chance to look at it more closely. And he goes, oh, I'm counting on it. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, but the t that he was just, he just kept touching John's face. And I'm just like, and I'm like, I'm giving myself chills now. Oh, my God. Yeah, it was, it was magic. Radio 418. with one thought before I go. Yeah. One of my fellow fan on the run fans on the run was touring. They went to like, you know, in Palm Desert, they were doing some touristy things. Right. And on the top of the mountain they met up with this guy who worked for the Lloyds of London and was the underwriter for the entire desert trip. <gasps> he was the underwriter for the oh and this guy just somehow decided to just spill his entire guts to my friend who he just met. And he's like, oh, you, because my friend had a T-shirt on a desert trip. And he goes, oh, you're desert tripping. Yeah. And he's like, oh, I'm the underwriter for Lloyd's London. I insured this whole trip. He goes, guess who is the healthiest, most easily insurable person on this tour? Uh... And he said, Mick Jagger. And he said, wrong. Paul McCartney. Wow. Well, that, that's what, that would have been my guess. Well, I would have said Mick because of you know, but who knows? His cholesterol could be three hundred. Right. So that was that was the takeaway from the from a strictly business insurance and liability perspective. Uh, Paul McCartney looks, according to the underwriters, yeah. is got a lot of life ahead of him. Yes. So I'm happy to was happy to hear that. So that's yeah. how I left. Like I'm like, okay, now we're going to keep going. We're right. going to keep going. He's going to be the Tony Bennett of rock and roll. We're there gonna, is something. We're going to still be doing this. There is something very life affirming. I think I've noticed this on the Happy Together tour, that the people come into the show and they they hear all these hit songs. And I think there's something life affirming about the fact that, you know, these performers are getting older, but they're still 
vital and there's still a lot of life in them and that the music is still as powerful as it ever was. Do you agree with that? Absolutely. Yeah. And to the, to see them physically, like when Paul, who's 74, yeah. can sing and stand for three hours yeah. without taking a drink of water. I know. And like, do you, know, what, you know what I have learned to do in, in deference and respect to him? If he sits at the piano, I'll sit. Yeah. But if he's standing, I'm standing. Because huh. if he can do it, so can I. There you go. There you go. And that's that pretty much sums it all up. If they can do it, we can do it. Look at what's possible. That, it, it, that they show you what's possible. You and, and it's through passion. Yep. Because if you love what you do, you will never work a day in your life. There you go. And it's, it's, it's a wonderful thing to be a part of this larger or smaller than however you look at it, yeah. part of mankind, you know, because we are, a con there's a connection at, amongst Beatle fans and music fans. Yes. And, you know, I, I, it's, it's just a, there's so much good and happiness in the world and yeah. so many reasons to be, feel affirmed that, uh, that human beings are inherently good. That's right. And in this community, when I was with this, this group and this trip, I didn't encounter any hatred, any yeah. negativity, any nastiness, and I, and it, it was a it was like a like a, a world apart, a microcosm of what we could be yeah. if we keep the bullshit out. Beautiful. Anyway, but well, I'm done waxing poetic for today. Well, no, no, gotta get I to my regular it. stuff. All right. Well, thank hey, you so oh, much. Thank you, John. You got it. Okay, I'll see love. You soon, take right? care, sweetheart. Love to the family. Yep. Take care. Bye bye. Bye bye. Radio four eighteen. Yeah, baby. Peace and love, peace and love, peace and love. You can't say that enough. Quick bit of bees and niece. The only bit of bees and niece that I'm doing right now. Ringo Starr birthday tribute. Sunday, July 9th, 7.30 p.m. at the Cutting Room in New York City, 44 East 32nd Street. Tickets are 15 bucks in advance, 20 at the door. The show might have already happened by the time you hear this. So, uh... Sorry about that. <laughs> the website for the podcast is radio418.com. You can subscribe to the show via Podbean, or you can subscribe on iTunes. Uh, follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash radio418. Follow me on Twitter at John Mon, J-O-N-M-O-N. Follow me on Instagram, John Montagna. The YouTube channel is youtube.com slash John Montagna Music. But anything and everything you want to know about me and what I'm doing is always at my website, johnmontagna.com. Thank you so much for listening to Radio 418. Peace and love, peace and love, peace and love. I will see you on the next one. Be well.